Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. At meals or in the car, there are long silences. After 31 years together, they just don't have much to say to each other. They don't fight much. They resolve what they can and shrug at the rest. They parallel play, usually him on his computer, her watching TV or reading. They haven't had sex in 10 years. And then his brother died suddenly. Mixed with the sadness were thoughts of his own mortality. Is that all there is? Should I do something? I drive across country, quit my job and play guitar, have an affair? He found him thinking a lot about the affair concept, but he concluded that the stress, the lying, the risk of disease, and especially the risk to their comfortable life was too great. So instead, he decided to have a serious discussion with his wife about how to improve their marriage. Decades ago, they had seen a marriage counselor, even a sex therapist, but they ended up agreeing it's more therapeutic for us to spend the money on retail therapy. And now, he would try to take matters into their own hands. So he proposed a relationship summit. Each of them independently would write regarding their big issues, sex, money, and recreation. They would write one thing that they want to change in his or herself to improve the marriage. Then they would show each other what they wrote and agree on what each of them would try to change. They ended up agreeing that the pain of trying yet again to resurrect their sex life was too great compared with the chances of improvement, so they agreed to remain not sexual, except that they'd try to cuddle a bit in bed. About money? He agreed that they could now afford to be looser about money. His parents had always struggled financially, and he inherited the attitude that it's better to save than to spend. But now they had saved enough that they could enjoy some more wise spending, at least, after all those years of parsimony. He didn't care to spend anymore, but she was happy that she could feel freer to buy her what she wanted, and even to do more travel other than a day trip. And about recreation? They agreed to do more of what they already enjoyed doing together, but somehow as the years went by, had done less of, going to watch high school basketball games, inviting their best friends over for a weekly bridge game or a book discussion, hiking along their favorite river, gardening together, taking long drives that end up at some enticing restaurant they've never been to. They also agreed that she should be freer to do activities she loves, but he doesn't like not just the travel, say, to exotic places with a girlfriend or by herself, but something like taking a dance class. They agreed to check in nightly to see if their plan needed tweaking or even reinventing. That story embeds at least four tips for refreshing a stale relationship. In the absence of a major triggering event, relationships can grow stale. Is it time to look at your relationship even in the absence of such an event. A stale relationship can invoke thoughts of having an affair, and sometimes emotions just trump rationality. But usually the disadvantages outweigh the advantages. So, if you can pull on ropes of restraint, you'll probably end up happier. A potent self-help tool is what I call a relationship summit, in which each person independently writes what he or she wants to improve, in, by changing themselves, they review each other's answers, agree on things to try, and check in nightly or weekly to see if tweaks or even major changes in the plan would be wise. Changes in a relationship that are most likely to be sustainable don't require a personality transplant. An introvert isn't likely to become an extrovert. Someone who hates processing feelings is unlikely to consistently and actively participate in that. A sex life that's more abundant for a decade is unlikely to be and stay much improved. A sober intellectual is unlikely to become a funster hipster. More likely sustainable are the changes that the couple proposed. For example, doing more of the things that they already enjoy doing together. So, might you want to try one or more of the tips I've just mentioned, or even convene a relationship summit? This is, by the way, part of a series in which I present tips in the context of a story. The others, <clears throat> which you can find on my channel, are on procrastination, time management, and finding Mr. or Ms. Wright. The next installment, which should be uh, available maybe late tomorrow night, is going to be on money. 
In any, case, in any event, I thank you for watching. I welcome your thumbs up or necessary thumbs down. Your sharing on your social media, there's a button down there for that. Your subscribing, comments. In any event, I do appreciate you watching. I am Marty Nemco.